Bell joins us live from New York. Mike, have the floodwaters receded and how is everything going for you this morning? Uh, good morning. We're in Brooklyn looking back at the uh, famous lower Manhattan skyline. Things are much better this morning, obviously, than yesterday, mid to late morning, when we had the record rainfall. Not only a record rainfall, but how fast it came down, uh, almost four inches in three hours in Central Park. This morning, we still have some issues. Now, yesterday, transportation was a big mess. Uh, buses were uh, stranded in the high waters, especially in the hardest hit areas right here in Brooklyn. Also, subway trains, a lot of those routes were closed. In fact, we heard stories yesterday evening that commuters could not get from Manhattan back to Brooklyn because the subway trains were closed at 4 and 5. Now this morning the subway pretty much is operational. There's still some delays on the N train. That runs from Queens from Manhattan and all the way to Coney Island. So uh, check with that. That's the only line I'm seeing where there's some delays. As far as buses yesterday, I said as they, I said, they were uh, stranded in the high waters. Everything is fine this morning with the weekday schedule. Roads are in much better shape. All the interstates are open. 278, uh, 95. The the only roadway that's having some issues right now is up in Westchester County. The Saul Mill River Parkway still, as of late last night, they have not updated it. New York DOT has not updated. There were some closures there between exits 11 and 15 and uh, 16. As far as airports go, much better today, day today. 31 cancellations at the three tri-state airports. Yesterday we had just over 500 and over 1,200 delays. So if you're flying in and out today, uh, things are going to be in much better shape as far as being on time. But if you don't have a seat, you may not get out until later on today. Good news ahead, though. The forecast is going to be superb, Kelly. Today, a few showers around. Otherwise, the sun is back tomorrow for the first time in nine days. And it's going to be out through Thursday, Kelly. Nobody is complaining. Everybody was asking me about when the sun was going to come out, Jen. And, you know, they're all in this, this cabin fever, fever mode. No, it's not the middle of winter, but it has been raining or cloudy or both since late last week. Jen? And Mike, just seeing some of the video and images of a lot of, you know, the trash and debris, you know, do you see a lot of that out there or had, were they able to clean it up yesterday? I think they cleaned most of that up yesterday. We drove here from our hotel. We didn't see any uh, debris on the streets, just the usual bag, big bags of trash. This is the East River. It looks nice and, well, I don't see any trash on the river, nice and clean. And there's Manhattan. Low ceiling, you can see, coming down across the top of the skyscrapers. skyscrapers. Again, we still have an easterly, northeasterly flow. That is going to go away, take care of the uh, stratus clouds overnight. And then as we get into tomorrow, it's just wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. By the way, the city was prepared. The mayor issued a travel advisory on Thursday evening so this was well forecasted was not a surprise and everybody unless they were you know living under a rock knew that this was coming and it pretty much played out as forecasted with these uh, incredible rainfalls maybe nobody would have forecasted eight inches in one day in JFK but uh, certainly we were running four five six inch forecast uh, up to two days before Mike Seidel, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Meteorologist Mike Seidel, he got to New York City just yesterday. Mike, you've been reporting from Brooklyn. I feel like that was one of the hardest hit areas of all the boroughs. Uh, hopefully things are cleaned up and better to get around today. <laughs> By far, much better. In fact, we got into some of those areas like Park Slope and Prospect Park uh, just a couple of hours after the flash flood and some of the video you're seeing, incredible video, cars uh, swamped. I saw some video where water was up to the tops of the doors of cars. People were stranded. By the way, New York City, they ended up, the fire department rescuing uh, people from 15 different vehicles, and there were three rescues in basements. So fortunately, it wasn't as bad as we've seen in previous tropical systems where basements get flooded out and we lose lives. No fatalities and no serious injuries. Plenty of warning on this system. Uh, there was a travel, travelers or travel advisory issued by the mayor back on Thursday evening and it was well forecasted. It was all over the news and all over social media so it was hard not to know what was coming and it came in buckets yesterday. Central Park picking up almost four inches in three hours between 8 and 11 a.m. By the way, one of the seals at the zoo got out but uh, the seal came back home. I think he probably liked it back at home better than wandering around the park.
Uh, you're always getting your uh, your regular feeding. Here in Brooklyn this morning, it's damp, it's cool in the upper 50s, still some showers on the radar. Let me show you that real quickly, just to give you an idea that it's nothing like yesterday. Still spinning around, again, that low pressure well southeast of Long Island. There's a heavier shower out there around Dix Hills in Suffolk County. That's going to rotate from Suffolk and in Nassau County, and we're hoping here, the crew, that it misses us here in Brooklyn. I think it'll stay just to the east. That's about it, Kelly, as far as rainfall. Subways, basically, uh, the subway's basically back to normal. The end train with some delays this morning. The other delays here and there are non-weather related. So, Kelly, uh, quite mm -hmm. a day yesterday. Another in a string of record rainfall, extreme rainfall events we've been seeing around the country and around the world uh, in recent years. And here it has a big impact on transportation, especially the underground sections of the New York City subway. Oh, yeah, the subways were a mess. And, Mike, this is all coming on the heels of a wet week. Yeah, meteorologist Mike Seidel joins us live from New York. Mike, how is everything going this morning? Well, it's still kind of miserable out here. Nothing like yesterday, but uh, we've got this breeze from the northeast continuing. We still have the coastal flood advisory for the north shore of Long Island, Nassau, Suffolk counties, for the midday high tide that goes from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. Inundation may be a half a foot higher than average, but other than that, things are backing off of that east wind. We're still getting a, kind of a misty, light rain rotating around. You can see on the radar some heavier showers now coming across Nassau County, heading towards at least parts of New York City, Brooklyn and Queens. That is really the last of it. And then by this afternoon, just dry and cloudy. Tomorrow, the sunshine comes out after nine days of this. Going into the storm yesterday morning, the park had already had just over 8.7 inches of rain. So the ground was saturated. We set the stage, more tropical moisture inflowing, and then we ended up with the record rainfalls. Daily records in the park, about five and a half. JFK getting over eight. They're a Wednesday on record. Impacts galore. The subway system was hard hit, especially here in Brooklyn. We were talking to folks last night that could not get back from Manhattan right over there because the trains were flooded out. They brought in the pump trains late last week, Thursday and Friday, uh, I should say late this week, fr Thursday and Friday, to get those in place to pump out the water. But, you know, it, they can only do so many gallons so fast, and when it's raining at two inches an hour, it got behind. Once they got the water pumped out, the subway was pretty much operational by late last night. This morning, the only train line I can see that's being impacted by flooding is the end line. That starts up in Queens, goes through, goes through uh, Midtown, Times Square, ends up down in Coney Island. All the other delays are based based on uh, mechanical issues and not weather. So Kelly, uh, a good response from the New York City Fire Department. Everybody's fine, no serious injuries, no fatalities, and just another indication of the extreme weather we're going through, another heavy rainfall event in just a few hours causing massive impacts on the transportation system here in uh, one of the biggest cities that we know of. Yeah, and Mike, I was worried about the basement apartment flooding. We saw a lot of fatalities from Ida with that, but this time you're not hearing much about um, the apartments, at least on the ground level, being impacted? No, only three basement rescues from the New York City Fire Department. That's good news. Yeah, that was tragic. Boy, that was the that was uh, one of the worst uh, angles from Ida here in New York City. People getting trapped in their basements and floodwaters rushing in, and they had really no way out. But nothing like that yesterday, although we had a lot of issues with cars being stranded. Uh, we had some water rescues, and also the airport's hit hard today. The airport is in much better shape, all the airports. We've got, uh, I just updated it, 30 two flight cancellations amongst the three airports. Yesterday, we had almost 525. So it's much better today. The problem today, Kelly, as you would know, is uh, the flights are pretty full uh, going out because everybody was bumped to today. So if you haven't uh, rescheduled your flight, you may be in a little bit of trouble trying to get out today. Yeah, they're going to try to make but, up for hey, by lost the way, time yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can always take the mega bus. Take the mega bus, you know, there you go. if you have to. But even the video buses being, you know, just going through that high water and the water just rushing down the aisle right. of some of those city buses, that was just crazy to see as well. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for that report. A state of emergency was declared. New York's mayor urging residents to temporarily shelter in place. Meteorologist Mike Sadell in New York. He got to Brooklyn there yesterday, Mike, just as the flash flooding was starting to get a little bit better. But we still have a little bit of rain today.
Yes, it's that annoying rain with that chilly northeast wind. The temperatures right now in the upper 50s. The wind uh, coming uh, down the East River across uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan. And that east wind will back off starting tonight and tomorrow. And finally, we'll get better weather at the beaches because the beaches have been hit very, very hard over the last eight to nine days with Ophelia, the remnants of Ophelia, and just the persistent eroding wind. So uh, not so much, you know, the beach weather will get better too, but just the fact that we don't want to see the sand, losing any more sand over at our beautiful beaches in Jersey and Long Island or anywhere, anywhere in the world. Meanwhile, behind me, you see the city and the city that never sleeps. That's Manhattan over there, lower Manhattan. And what a mess yesterday. All those rainfall totals uh, averaging five to six inches across this area. We have some local personal weather stations that were between seven and eight. JFK did have just over eight. Their wettest day since they opened in 1948. But the subways were impacted. The subway service across the city. Uh, major impacts because of flooding in the subway uh, trains underneath. They brought in the pump trains early ahead of the event, but when it rains two inches an hour and it just comes down in there with gravity, it's just hard uh, to get it pumped out fast enough. They have gotten it all pumped out for the most part. Uh, a couple of hours ago, the only thing I saw that were being impacted, the only train was the N train that runs from uh, Astoria, Queens, all the way down to Coney Island. Uh, so just to check ahead, that otherwise the other delays are the usual mechanical delays or whatever else is going on, like one, one train was shut down for a disturbance. Meanwhile, as far as the weather goes, Kelly, much, much, much better starting tomorrow. I'll be standing out tomorrow. If I was here, I'd be in the sunshine right on through mm -hmm. the latter part of next week. And fortunately, nobody lost their life and there were no serious injuries despite of the unprecedented rainfall in many areas across the city. It all fell. Basically, a month's worth of rain fell in New York City yesterday in about three hours. Yeah, you said it. That is so key. No loss of life. There were rescues, but thankfully, you know, everything is okay. Our Mike Seidel is live in New York where people are trying to clean up from the flooding and preparing for more rain. And Mike, for a city that relies so much on public tr transportation, this was a big disruption yesterday. How are people moving today? Things are pretty much back to normal. Of course, it's week, weekend schedules on the ferries and the trains and the buses. But yesterday, a massive disruption on the subway because of flooding on the tracks. They did bring in the pump trains early. The mayor issued a traveler's advisory. And this was all over the Weather Channel and social media. This was not a surprise uh, rainfall event. Sure, do you forecast eight or nine inches of rain? Maybe not. But we did forecast three, four, five, six inches of rain potentially in local spots. And that's what very so it's a good forecast. Unfortunately, when it comes so quickly, i.e. in New York City Central Park, how about four inches in about three hours? And that just flooded the tracks, flooded the roadways, buses were stranded, cars were stranded. New York City Fire Department uh, did 15 water rescues out of cars and three basement rescues. Fortunately, no fatalities like we had uh, in previous storms where water rushes into basements and families, entire families are trapped and lost their lives. So uh, good news all around, as Paul mentioned. As far as the airports go today, much better. Yesterday, we had just over 500 cancellations. This morning, about three dozen at all three airports. So very minimal as far as cancellations and delays now running at about 70. Yesterday, we had about 1,300. Uh, the thing about today, though, is you can imagine not a lot of seats left because everybody was bumped to today because of the flight lights canceled yesterday on certainly on uh, certain routes as far as uh, the rain goes yes it's still kind of annoying out here just talking to a lady getting on the uh, ferry she's like uh, what's the you know so the sun's going to come out tomorrow so we only get one sunny day because she mentioned and we've been mentioning how many just gray, gray dreary weekends they've had in the northeast over the past several months but starting tomorrow he says with confidence it's going to be sunny for about five days in a row, four or five days in a row at least. So a good payback uh, after uh, some rotten weather and also the fact that uh, the beaches have been hit hard with the northeast wind and the erosion. Lynette? All right, Mike. Yeah, I know they're excited about that sunny day for sure. All right, thanks for the report. Our meteorologist Mike Seidel is live in New York City. And uh, Mike, it seems like things are back to get back to normal in terms of most transportation but i mean it was coming down it took a lot of people by surprise it's a miracle no one lost their lives 
Yes, and I think that goes to the warning and the uh, excellent forecasting from the Weather Service, from the Weather Channel. Everybody knew this was coming uh, more than 24 hours in advance. And as a result, or at least the night before, people knew uh, what to do. Stay home, uh, don't go get in the subway. And that's what happened as, as a result. Nobody lost their life. There were no serious injuries. Nobody was trapped in a basement like we've seen before. There were three basement rescues, 15 rescues by the fire department from vehicles in the city of New York. This morning, it is pretty much back to normal. We had some delays earlier on the N train. Otherwise, the delays I'm seeing on the uh, MTA uh, site is basically, those delays are basically what you normally see, brakes, malfunctioning, you know, things like that, mechanical in nature. There's the city that never sleeps, and the ceiling is just over the tops of the skyscrapers looking across the East River into Manhattan. But that's not impacting flights at the airports. Everything is pretty much running on time. Right now, about 75 flights across all three airports have some delays, and there's been about three dozen cancellations, Molly, but a whole lot better than yesterday's over 500 cancellations and 1,300 plus delays. So uh, a good forecast, early warning, save lives, uh, saved injuries, but still the bottom line is there was a significant impact on transportation, whether it was a bus, a subway, a train or just trying to fly in and out of New York City yesterday. But today, much better. Tomorrow, the sun comes out, believe it or not, for, for a long stretch. So that's, that's what everybody's looking forward to. I'm sure, Mike, it's been a long, soggy summer in not only New York City, but a lot of the Northeast.